Ezekiel chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We know that if the tent, which is our earthly home, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in, heaven, in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan, being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith not by sight. Yes, we are of good courage, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our next hymn, I Love to Tell the Story. Jesus and his love. 
God's great gift of grace. I love to tell the story. Be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows, and he knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants, and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From appearances, things look like Jesus' ministry has taken a downturn. What we are reading today follows on the heels of what we read last week. Do you remember last week was about Jesus being charged with exercising? I'm not meaning he was doing push-ups. No, he was exercising demons. He was casting them out. But religious leaders said, he's doing this by the power of Satan. He's in league with Satan. So Jesus is in union with Satan. That's being charged by the religious leaders, who if you want to be a leader of the Jewish religion, you would think you'd want them to support you. And then secondly, what we heard, Jesus' own family thinks he's crazy. They think he's nuts. They've come to get him and bring him back to his home in Nazareth. Things don't seem to be looking too good right now for Jesus and his ministry. The truth of the matter is, People are rejecting him. And now, right before our text today, he says, I'm speaking in parables now. Why? The parables, the goal is to judge those who are rejecting him so that they become even more obstinate. But for the people who have accepted him, he is trying to build up their faith through the parables. And here we hear that he explains everything if people pursue it and ask him privately. But anyways, one of the parables that we hear today upon hearing all of those things is this. Seeds are planted. A farmer doesn't have a full understanding of what is going on when his seeds are planted. But that doesn't mean nothing is happening. A process is going on, and it's an orderly process, and it will end in a harvest. What's going on in Jesus' ministry? Jesus 
is working. Jesus, however, his ministry is not being understood very well. But that doesn't mean nothing is happening. An orderly process is going on that will end up in God's kingdom goals happening. That's what's happening. People don't understand it. It's not looking very great. But wonderful things are going on. Jesus Christ is working today, too. Though it isn't understood by the world, like we talked about last week, the world thinks the church can be a bunch of crazies, and they stereotype all Christians together, and they don't want to hear that grace is a free gift of God alone. And they don't want to hear that there's even right and wrong, that people are sinners who need God's grace. The church is not often understood. It's a mystery to them. And sometimes the church is even a mystery to people. You know, we sing that song often. It's called Lift High the Cross. And that's such a powerful and glorious song. But then it doesn't seem to match up with how life is with the church. Once again, there's rejection by the world to the church. We wish they'd accept the gospel. We wish they'd join us, but they don't. Oftentimes, the church is plagued with empty pews, and I see a couple today. We pray sometimes in church, and our answer is a no. Sometimes there are even quarrels and controversies in church. But if Christ is being preached, and his word and sacrament are being served up, good things are happening. A process is happening that will end in God's kingdom's goals being reached that we don't understand every time what is going on. We don't always understand, and sometimes we're discouraged because we would like to see clear evidence that success is going our way. But that isn't always how it is. Sometimes work and life in the church is a mystery. But it will end with God reaching his goals. One of God's goals, as we just talked a little bit about, is that to judge those people who have rejected him. Right now, God's work's even being done among those people who hear the word and reject it. But it's also being done about those people who hear the word and then accept it. It's still going on. It's going on day after day, and this really is the lifeblood, the great work of the church. Now, is it being a success? Sometimes that's a mystery. But the goals will be reached. Please don't be discouraged when you're in the church and go, oh, boy. What have we got to do to get people in here? Serve everybody beer on Sundays? What's going on? Don't be discouraged. As long as God's word is being proclaimed, as long as his sacraments are being offered, things are happening. There is a process going on that doesn't seem orderly in our minds, but it's orderly in God's. He is the farmer and he is the ground, controlling the seed that's sprouting and growing, however he wants it to sprout and grow. And grow. So in the end, this parable for us as Christians is faith. It's about faith in Jesus. He will do his work, even among us, even when things don't look so hot, and even when there's some bad times in the church. God is getting his work done in the church and through the church. Don't be discouraged. God always meets his goal. God always wins in the end. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. <laughs>